Welcome to ArcGIS Pro. Let's go ahead and click on Map here under Blank Templates and give it a name. First Pro Map and make sure this goes somewhere that works for you. If you're on your own computer, it can be your C drive. If you're working on one of the lab computers, it's got to be the Google Drive file stream. Okay. And as soon as we open this up, we have a base map, which we can turn these details on and off. We have the world topographic map and the world hillshade. And as we zoom in, we get an increasing level of detail, more lakes, more ponds, more rivers, and more detail on our hillshade. If we want different base maps, we can go map, base map, and select imagery, imagery hybrid, any of these options. Let's try imagery. There it is. As we zoom in, again, increasing resolution. These are the fur waves on Katahdin. Just like QGIS, we can take a shape file, drag and drop. And similar to QGIS, we can click on this color swatch, double click in that case, select black outline. And if we want to modify this in some way, we can go to properties and change the color. Let's try white and change the width. Just hitting that down button makes that not work so well. It goes down to zero. But then we have 0.2, white, apply. There it is. Zoom, zoom, zoom. There we go. We can bring in lines. Same process. Shape file, drag and drop. There's our highways. And we can also go to map, add data. And from there, go into C drive or your G drive. I'm going to go to GIS NT. And from there, once that loads, I'll go to my GIS 300 data sets. There, week one. And I'll grab the points for Stream Sensor Points 2019. That's another way of adding data to the map. A difference when you display the symbology, instead of right click properties, which would take you to this window here, cancel out of that, right click symbology. That takes you over here. We can have a single symbol, or let's try graduated colors has to have a field, so let's give it the hours above 70 degrees Fahrenheit in July and August. And pick a new color scheme here. Let's try from hmm, yellow to red. Okay. If we want to change these values here, we can double click and say use 100 and 150 hours and 500. That'll adjust things just that little bit so we have these clean or even numbers. We can look at the histogram here and see this is where the breaks are. And the length or width of this bar shows about how many points you have within that range. So this X bar here, that's the average, 80.04 hours above 70 degrees Fahrenheit in July and August. And then you see fewer, thinner bars once you get into these higher numbers. We can also symbolize by category. So instead of graduated colors, let's try unique values. And this would work best for points. Like if you had a tree and it was a tree species, so you'd have categories for spruce, fir, hardwood, softwood, that kind of thing. The only thing we really have like that is the date. This pastel scheme doesn't work very well. Let's see what else we have. That will stand out a bit more. And this shows you which points I installed on which day. So those ones were on a particular day, and we can use our mouse, actually. We don't have to find an identified tool. We can just click on it, and it assumes that if you're clicking on something, you want to know something about it. So that one was installed on 5-23-2019. So there's one difference with the software. Instead of finding an identified features tool, which you have to click on first and then click on your point, you can just click on things, and it will tell you what they are. And I'm seeing that I don't actually have to tell it which one of these I'm looking at. It will work no matter what I have selected over here. It's just looking for whatever I click on. So with Q, you said identify features from this layer, then click on it. With ArcGIS, you just click on whatever it is you're curious about. Think, 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 think. We'll see if I hit that road. Yes, I did. Main DOT roads category three. That is Highway 161. 
Now, so you need to get to this point in particular, we can use the scroll wheel, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. We're going to have to go from here to here. So to make this into an Avenza map that we can export as a PDF, we're going to go to Insert, New Layout. And let's go ahead and make this a nice big layout. And let's go ahead, looks like it's wider than it is tall. Let's go for an NZC. And just like QGIS, we need to tell it where the map frame ought to go. So I'm going to select that layout that I have here for my map, and I'm going to click, hold, drag, and release a box, aiming for these corners. It won't snap for you. And there it is. So you see I'm using my scroll wheel right now. That's just as if I'm moving the map closer to or farther from my face. I'm not actually changing the scale. And you see I've done pretty well on this, getting this map right to the corners here, which is what we want for an Avenza map. But if we go to Format here, I can see how this is locked into the bottom left corner. If I change that to 0, 0, that's 0 inches off the bottom left. And then I can change that to be exactly 22 by 17. And that is exactly the size of the page. So as we were just seeing, if I use my scroll wheel to go in and out, that's just moving this page around. It's not changing the map itself. All this is still right where it is. It's locked right in there. If I right click and say activate, now I can move this around so I can zoom in and out with my scroll wheel. You see the edge of the page is still right there. I can zoom in, I can move stuff around, and then click back here, back to layout, now it's locked in in that new spot. So again, right click, activate, I can move that around, zoom in a little bit, and now I can see I'll make this turn here, come in here, out here, and get to my spot here, which now I'm seeing could stand to be a bit bigger. And then back to layout to lock that into place. And we have the basics up here. So let's try North Arrow. We have all these options, but let's explore the topographic here. And let's try just the basic TM North Arrow. And I'm going to click out here so I can get a good look at it. And that gives you just an absolute ton of information, not least of which is your magnetic declination. So I'm going to click off and then click on that and hit delete. And let's try some other options. So we have this TM blue here, and that's giving us very much the same information. Delete that, and let's try another one. We have this Topo North. Click on that, and there's a little bit simpler, but it gives us down to the minute. So we have our True North, our GN Grid North, MN Magnetic North. So Grid North is zero degrees, 27 minutes to the east, and magnetic north is 16 degrees, 29 minutes to the west. And when I click on that, I can go to North Arrow Format, and say I want to change all this to yellow to stand out against this, so I can make the line yellow, see how that changes here, and I can make the text yellow as well, and then I can go ahead and drag that here, and now that stands out a bit better. Then back to my Insert tab here, I can throw a legend on that, and I'm just going to click off here so I can see it first. That looks fine. Let's go to Format the Legend. And you see how we have a Fill and Line option here, but it's grayed out. To get to those, right-click on the legend, maybe twice if you have to, and Properties. Once you have that, then we can change this border can be black and background can be white. And I can make the border background a bit bigger here. So right click properties, can now come now, thank you. And change that X, Y gap a little bit. Maybe not quite that much. Maybe yes that much. And then I can drag that in wherever I want it to be. And when I click off into the gray, if I don't like that, and I don't really, I can right click, properties, and let's change that back to no color. And when I click off, I just have this nice white background around my legend. 
And most of these legend entries are okay, but this Me Township 24 to Shoreline, that's kind of sloppy. So if I right click and let's see, where can we change this? There's always a way to change it. Let's go to Properties, General, Name, Main Township Bounds. Okay, and see how that changes down there. Whatever you have here goes here. So this becomes that. And let's right click on this and go to Symbology. Before I said I wanted these to be bigger. If I go under More here, I can format all symbols and that will allow me to increase the size. So let's just change that to 7 and apply. And now that appears bigger. And then back out of here and close that. Now back to Insert. Scale bar, of course, not necessary for an Avenza map. It has coordinates and will give you distances. But let's just go ahead and click on that and see what we get for a scale bar. Now that's barely showing up and it's not making a lot of sense. So let's right click and go to properties. And under general, you might have to expand that a little bit to see all this. Map units currently blank. Let's change that to, hmm, feet or US feet. Well, let's see. That's changed, which is good, but you can't see it, which is bad. So let's go over to display and let's give it a background and make that background white. And you can barely see anything there. So let's give it an X gap and a Y gap, which will give a little bit of space around there where we can see. I'm going to click off and now we can see 3,000, 1,500, 0, 3,000 feet. Not really how I like my scale bars. See how zero is in the middle and you have one full division before the zero and then one after it. So that's actually 6,000 feet. Some people like it, I don't. Right click, properties, and over here under options, uncheck show one division before zero. And now we have zero, 1,500, 3,000, 6,000 feet. And this division here defaults to adjust division value when you resize. So if I drag out here and make that bigger, these division sizes change. So now it's every 4,500, 9,000 feet. I don't like that. So I'm going to right click properties and change this resize behavior to adjust width. And that allows me to set whatever I want the division value to be, which let's try 2,000 feet and that'll be fine. So I'm going to close that. And now I'm going to export as PDF. And that is under share here and export the layout. That is defaulting to PDF as it should. If it's not, you can use this drop down here and select it. 200 dots per inch is good. And under export options, make sure you have export map georeference information checked. That's what allows it to be read into Avenza Maps. I'm going to call it layout demo April 1 and export. And there it is in my documents where I saved it. Double click on that. And that is the Avenza Ready PDF with all of this information provided. And there is the point I need to access. And there are my turns. Back in my layout here, if I need to mark some turns, I can use text, rectangle, or just plain text if I so choose. And let's go ahead and plop that in here. And then I can just type in turn here. And there we go. If I want to change that, I can click on it and then right click, either edit text, which will allow me to type in whatever I want, or right click properties. And there's my text again, number of columns, I can increase that to two, see what happens there. Turn here, now on two lines instead of one. And let's see what else, text symbol, that window likes to go away. When that does, just right click, properties, back to it. And under text symbol, we can also add a halo. And halo symbol, let's make that white and apply. See what that does. So zooming in here, turn here is now standing out quite a bit better. We can also move that here. So turn right there. And likewise, you can draw lines. So say you want to trace the entire route, say drive along here, go here, 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 
And this is not creating a new permanent shape file. This is just an annotation or a drawing on this map. But for what we're doing, it could be exactly what you need to show somebody how to get from where that turn is to where it is the study site happens to be. So carrying on and double click to end. There it is. Color is not what we want. Right click, properties, and line. Let's go under symbol here and change that to bright red, three points wide, apply. There's the road you should follow. Not perfect, a little pointy, but you could get a little more time into that and make that a pretty nice smooth line or keep it as it is just to show, go from point A to point B on this road, not that one. Other options under line, we can do a curve. So point, point, point. Delete that, we don't like it. Or freehand, click, hold, drag. And there's our fun route to who knows where. Delete again. And you can make a point. So click on point, click where you want the point, and there it is. Delete. And say you want to make a different kind of a point. Under this drop down here, that is selecting the default point that whenever you click point, that's what you get. Click off there, there's your point. Click it again, delete. Likewise with a line here. So now I've selected highway. I'm going to freehand a highway down here. It's going to come out terribly, but there it is. So there's a highway. And select again, delete, and there goes the highway. So there we go. In about 10-15 minutes, we've got some reasonably good air photos. We've got lines, text, points. If we so choose, we can do rectangles, polygons as well. Double click to finish, delete, change our background here. Let's make that green. Double click and again, delete. If we want to be super fancy, we can add a picture in here. And let's go into my downloads here and add in, hmm, let's just pretend we had a budworm here. And we'll plop that right there. There's my photo of a budworm. And we can make him bigger. And imagine all sorts of fun stuff you could do with that. But we've got that, uh, hmm, yeah, that'll be fine. Move that right there. There's a budworm eating the mill, a very big budworm. So there you have it. ArcGIS Pro, Air Photos, Basic Map Elements of North Arrow, Scale Bar, and Legend. Insert photos, make annotations of points, lines, and polygons, and text. And as always with GIS, this layout view is just a rough preview. This is the actual finished product, and when you're viewing that at 100% resolution, that is what your text looks like. There's your mill, and there's your giant, massive budworm that will end the world. So you can email that to yourself, load that into Avenza Maps. When you make this turn here, you'll watch the little dot that is you from your phone's GPS. Go along there and just stay out of this guy's way, and you should be fine.